at Revolt, it was the opportunity uh, for it to work for one brand. And it was the only brand that you're talking about hip hop. Hip hop is driving global culture. It's the number one most listened to music in the world. Like to be able to be narrowly focused on something that is clearly moving the world globally good for black people and to drive that. Um, a lot of it has to do with just getting access to the news, access to Sean Combs, being able to be anchored in hip hop. So a big piece of my thing has been, um, when it comes to black culture, you have two choices. Am I doing something for black culture and black people? Or am I doing something for black culture and black people that can impact the world? At Revolt, it was the opportunity um, for it to work for one brand. And it was the only brand that you're talking about hip hop. Hip hop is driving global culture. It's the number one most listened to music in the world. Like to be able to be narrowly focused on something that is clearly moving the world globally, good for black people, and to drive that right. so singularly you, focused. Yeah, right? that, and that is true. Revolt is just Revolt. Exactly. What you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it's like, this is hip hop. This is revolt, and I can see that in all of the ways that that can move things for the world, for black people and the culture, and drive singularity. That was a big, that was a big deal. So you take this CEO position at Revolt, that means you gotta move West Coast from the East. How was that transition? Or how did you decide to say, yeah, I'm doing it? Yeah. Um, the, real, the real truth on that one is, when Revolt first called, I didn't even entertain it. My wife had a job in New York that she loved. I wasn't going to ask her to walk away from that role. Um, she, on her own, you know, comes to me at some point in time and says, yo, I think you should consider it. We'll figure it out. I started Revolt uh, June 1st. Didn't need to be here because it was COVID and we still aren't in the office, clearly. Um, but New York was so bad at the beginning of the pandemic. Ambulances every 20 minutes. I was trapped on the 58th story of this high rise and felt like I couldn't get out. It felt so unhealthy. And so the idea of moving to LA where the sun was out every single day and we got four to ceiling windows and I can swim every day, like just sounded like a better way to live yeah. life during quarantine. And so just picked up and made it happen. You gotta meet this whole new team and you meet everybody via Zoom. Yeah. How was it meeting this, this new team you gotta work with like that? Man, this will probably go down as one of the hardest leadership challenges yeah, I've ever had. You're leading through two global pandemics. You're talking about a business, like every business back then was, every media business was down 20% if not more. So you're talking about money falling out of like, I um, went falling out of your pockets. You're talking about people dealing with COVID and the health and family members. You're talking about um, Brianna Taylor, Amal Arbery, George Floyd, all of those things. And then it's like, boom, here's your new COO. <laughs> and I don't know any of these people. I don't know where they live. I still don't know. So your COO, everything's going great. You're adjusting. And then all of a sudden the CEO steps down. How was that? Where there's a world where I knew that could happen. I just never imagined it would happen so quickly. Um, but she had built a great company with a super solid financial foundation. Um, so I was super grateful for that. And then, um, yeah, Colin, who's the COO, CFO, um, he and I joined yeah, sides right, and right. just became the co-leads for the next six months. And it was, you know, leading us through COVID, leading us through Summit is our biggest signature tempo program, leading us through our first virtual summit. It was crazy, man. Like that's, I'm always like, if you just put all of the things that we had against us, um, this is why I'm so proud of this team because we have overcome so much and not even like overcome like we're doing okay, like overcome and thriving. Um, and it's been done by the blood, sweat, and tears of a team who sees the vision, who sees the purpose, and we wake up every day trying to build the world's most powerful black-owned media fucking fire in the world.